This is triggered. <laughs> I just put that one there to try this spot out. Folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Wednesday, November 9th, and uh, we have a few days left of some good weather, and uh, we're wrapping up pretty much everything with the hives, all the big, big work. Most of my lightweight hives are where they need to be now. Uh, we had that drought in the fall, so I had to do a lot of internal feeding, so you all saw that. And uh, I put on 250 pounds of sugar mixed with the water and i mixed all that one and a half to one so that's two gallons per 25 pounds basically comes out to one and a half to one so i've i've done that with uh, 250 pounds of sugar i got two more sacks here i want to mix up one more and i'm going to internal feed one hive that still is too light and the population is a little low and i think that's why they weren't able to bring the weight on so a while ago I just reduced it down and uh, I'm going to put about an inch of syrup in the top feeder and let them work on that. So we got two days of really good weather here in the 70s here in central Oklahoma. Then we've got a cold front coming through and it's going to get down and the highs are only going to be in the 40s for about a week. So uh, I want to open feed for these two days and get that uh, feed onto that one light hive and boost them up as much as I can. And this will be the last liquid feeding I do for the year. Uh, if I feed again, it'll be on later part of January and I'll put on solid sugar cakes and I'll probably do a video on that. So right now I wanna mix up one of these and do some more open feeding, which I'm open feeding right now. And I'll give you a shot of that. So that hive I was telling you about, uh, ants got into that feed and after they're in there for a while, I think the bees kind of lose interest in it. It may taste bad. I don't know what the deal is, but I'll run that through a strainer and get the ants out. And then I'll bring it up here and open feed it and they take it just fine. So that's what, that's what you see right there. So let's get this uh, other bag mixed up. We'll get down to the hives and get that on there. And uh, then we'll open feed for the next two days. Let's get going. Okay, so this time of year, going into winter, you want to mix a heavier syrup. In the springtime, you want to simulate a nectar flow, so you want a light syrup. So I mix a little lighter than one to one, uh, a little more water than sugar by weight. And in the fall, I'll mix one and a half to one. And some people, a lot of people use two to one, but uh, I use one and a half to one because our winters are fairly mild and uh, I haven't had any issues with that. I don't have issues with moisture buildup in my hives. Uh, I just don't have it. It doesn't get that cold. And if it does, it doesn't stay cold that long. So to mix one and a half to one, I take these 25 pound bags, put it in a five gallon bucket, and then I mix in uh, two gallons of hot water. And it fills the bucket up to about right there. So it's a perfect mixture. Uh, it works great with a five gallon bucket. I used to use, you all probably saw last year, I had that, uh, last couple of years, I had that uh, nectar dispenser I made out of a uh, sprayer and I put a, like a gas pump nozzle on it and it worked good. Uh, the, the thing I didn't like about it is it was only 10 gallons and I couldn't fill up all my hives and I have 30 hives and I'd normally be feeding five or six or seven when I would feed. I would run out. So I, I switched back to the five gallon buckets. I can load these up in my wagon and I can do three or four and I can haul down a lot more syrup. And uh, it is heavy, so you have to deal with that. But I think it's it's better than that, that sprayer. That was a cool gimmicky thing. It just, 
it just didn't work out and when you were done you had to really clean it out good and that took a lot of extra time and these buckets are super easy to clean i just put them here in a sink and spray them down turn them upside down done and that thing you got to be careful and i can't bring it inside to clean it and bees would smell <laughs> the stuff in there and they would get in there and you, you can't leave the lid on it because it needs to dry out so it just didn't work out well but uh, if I did it all over again, I would get one that's like a 30 gallon and that would be worth the, the extra uh, pain of having to clean it out and all that if I could do one that was 30 gallons, but uh, that would cost a lot more. All right, I'll shut up and let's get mixing this. Now, so I use these, this great value sugar from Walmart and uh, it's not the best sugar compared to like name brands the granules are in, are not the finest and occasionally you'll find things that aren't sugar just little particles of whatever but uh these don't complain the price is right it's uh almost 14 dollars i think for one of these Oops, there goes sugar on the floor. <laughs> I've been saving them. I was thinking I'm going to use them for smoker fuel. But that's a lot of smoker fuel. <laughs> so good thing about having this apartment out here. I've got a sink, I've got a hot water heater. So I kick that hot water heater on when I want to... Uh, mix up some nectar it mixes a lot faster if you use hot water somewhere in ah wasn't paying attention somewhere in here i have a small bottle i'll show you that has the, the mixture on it I use a drill with this uh, mixer on there for like mortar. So I believe one gallon is two to one. So this would be a two to one mixture here. So you can see how thick that is. So I'll run it, the drill forwards for a while and then I'll kick it reverse to pull all the granules up high and then I kick it back on forward once it gets liquefied pretty good. I got these lids that just snap on for this feed. It doesn't have to be really tight and a good seal like for the honey and i keep these buckets separate i use these only for mixing up the syrup and i'm going to bring in my little two gallon two and a half gallon bucket and we'll fill it up right here okay Pop the lid a little bit. Hey, you like my dirt, dirt rooster hat? Randy brought that. He gave that to me when he came by last weekend. Pretty slick. Y'all need to get over there to the dirt rooster uh, website, 628 Dirt Rooster, where hobby beekeeping is a weight of life. I better pay attention. <laughs> yeah, get over there and. Uh, Check out his hats, they're awesome. I've got another one that's uh, all dark and uh, it's solid in the back. I don't wear it very often because it's really a nice hat and I don't want to get dirty. I wore it one time uh, three years ago and uh, it's when I got that, the huge swarm <laughs> showed up that day. I just happened to be wearing that hat. So it's like good luck. 
That's uh, hive number 26 is the huge swarm. And man, it was, it was huge. Okay. Try to wipe the sticky off the floor. We'll go out and uh, let's get this out there on the open feeding spot. This is the one that I, it's full to about here with uh, that strange sugar, sugar water that I took out of that hive. It's full of ants. So you see it's not slowing them down at all. I also had that frame feeder in there. So I think this is a, What's well, a two gallon? This is a two gallon bucket and the lid's full of holes, little holes, basically like that. These, I don't trust. The lid just barely sits on there tight and you gotta have it sitting perfectly flat. Otherwise, the sugar water goes around the lid seal and will drain out. So if you have it tilted too much, it'll drain it all out so but it seemed like a good idea at the time it just that lid does not fit on there very well all right i'm going to load that bucket up in the four-wheeler because i got my uh tractor disconnected from the trailer i'm down there uh i'm sweeping up leaves I got a big old agrifab lawn sweeper and I'm sweeping up leaves and putting them in my compost there. I've done probably 20 trips and compressed them down with the tractor front end loader. Okay, so this is Hive 26 we're working on right here. It's a single deep here. And you can see it's got a feeder on it right now. And you can see there's some ants on there already. So that feeder's empty. That's the little ants that are getting in my syrup. And I don't have anything down there to protect the hive from the ants crawling up on it. I ran out of my Tanglefoot stuff. I need to get some more. So I uh, put the entrance reducer on it after I reduced it down to a single deep. And just have it on the small entrance there. Uh, since this is a pretty small hive, fairly small. So I'm not going to put a whole lot of syrup in there just because of the, the ant issue. So I'm going to put probably like three quarter inch on each side. And we're getting some bees up in here. Boy, they can smell that stuff a mile away. And there's a yellow jacket. they're getting in there faster than I can get them out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm putting the cover on that's got a notch, but uh, I will cover that notch up with the telescoping lid. So it's right up against it so bees can't go in right there. And I'll push back here with my hive tool. Make sure it's tied up against that. So yeah, look at the bees. I may have to uh, put one of those beast blockers on here. 
that feeding stimulant, boy, it, uh, it attracts them. In fact, I might go get that and do that right now. Okay, I went and grabbed one of my Saracel beast blockers and uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to trim down the side here uh, because it won't fit with a wood bottom board because the sides come out about right here. And it's got some little grooves in the plastic right there that can help you uh, snap it off. So I do have my pocket knife and I will score it a little bit. Actually, I don't have my pocket knife. It's up there where I was cutting the uh, sugar sack. All right, so I snapped off this side right here. It fits right in there perfect between these two on a standard Langstroth bottom. So I picked this one, it's got the Ukraine's colors because I'm a big fan of Ukraine, Slava Ukraine. So it's got a standoff on the center right here. It sticks, so you have to use the long screw for that one. And it comes with one long screw. Oh, these are square Robinson heads. Well, hopefully I can get this done with the Phillips head. Yeah. Kinda. This one, I may just push this up in there because it's right on the crack. The new ones, they said, they move the hole up so it's, it's up in the wood and it doesn't line up on the crack. But it's pressing against these so it's gonna hold. So I'll open one side so the home bees, actually I'll do it over here by this entrance because they have their little hole right there. So the home bees will figure out this is how they come and go. See, they're coming out now. And the robber bees will gather around down here trying to find their way in and they won't be able to. And they're also trying to get in up here. When you're working without gloves, you always want to slide your hand. Don't just grab something because you're liable to put it right on top of a bee. Here's a good live weight and old battery. I'm gonna lay that down. So the ones that have bricks towards the back, this ones I were feeding and that means they're done. And I need to pull the feeder off or out, it means there's a frame feeder in there. There's another one right there. So there's a frame feeder down on that one. Yeah, so in the winter time, you don't have as much to do, but you really need to pay attention to, this, to a few things that are important. Take care of your entrances uh, be sure you have your ventilation open and all of that for your top covers. Make sure you don't have feeders in there that you don't need. Feeders on top. You don't want to overwinter with the top feeder on there because your heat goes up into that top feeder and the bees ha have to consume more honey to stay warm. So you don't want that extra air space up above them. So uh, I did see a good video. You need to check it out. Uh, David Burns. I think it was called Five Things uh, That People May Have Told You to do in winter that are wrong <laughs> pretty good video check that out i like him so uh that is it for this video i probably will have another one later on uh i'm going to start rendering my wax today so i might might video some of that so uh give me a thumbs up if you would uh, check out david burns and go get your dirt rooster hat and subscribe to my channel before you leave and we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video y'all take care mm -hmm.